Hello scholars, welcome to today's video on the cardiac cycle. To understand the cardiac cycle, we have to first of all learn about the function of the heart. Heart is basically a hollow muscular organ that pumps the blood throughout the body. It can be divided into right-sided heart and the left side heart. The right-sided heart collects the deoxygenated blood, denoted by the blue color in this diagram, from various organs and then it pumps that blood into the lungs, into the pulmonary circulation. In the lungs, that deoxygenated blood is oxygenated and again sent to the left side of the heart from where it is distributed throughout the body and the organs take up the oxygen and again send it to the heart. So a cycle of the circulation is completed. Now let's look at what is happening inside the heart. So all that deoxygenated blood is collected into the right atrium from the superior vena cava, inferior vena cava. After it is collected in the right atrium, that blood is sent into the right ventricle through the tricuspid valve. After it has collected in the right ventricle, it is moved into the pulmonary circulation through pulmonary artery and it goes through the pulmonary valves. It gets oxygenated in the lungs and it is transferred into the left atrium from the pulmonary veins. Now that oxygenated blood in left atrium is transmitted into the left ventricle through the mitral valve and from the ventricles into the aorta and into the systemic circulation through the aortic valve. This is the forward flow of the blood. The mitral valves and the tricuspid valve together are known as the atrioventricular valve or the AV valve and they prevent the backflow of the blood from the ventricles into the atrium. The aortic valve and the pulmonary valves are known as semilunar valves and they prevent the backflow of blood from the pulmonary artery and aorta into their respective ventricles. The valves help in maintaining a forward flow of the blood. The blood is collected into the ventricles in the period of diastole and that blood is sent into the circulation in period of systole. So when we say systole and diastole of heart, we mean systole and diastole of the ventricles. Although the atria also undergo systole and diastole, simply the systole means systole of the ventricles. Now let's come to the cardiac cycle. Cardiac cycle is the performance of human heart from ending of one heartbeat to the beginning of the next. Cardiac cycle duration comes out to be 0.8 seconds if we take the heartbeat as 75 beats per minute. The cardiac cycle can be divided into systole and diastole. The systolic phase lasts for 0.3 second and the diastolic phase lasts for 0.5 second. During the diastolic blood is collected into the ventricles and during the systole that collected blood is sent into the circulation. In the middle is the systole of the atria and the diastole of the atria. The atrial systole lasts for 0.1 second and the atrial diastole lasts for 0.7 second. This is the ventricular systole that lasts for 0.3 second and the diastole that lasts for 0.5 second. Now let's begin at the ventricular systole. During the ventricular systole, when the ventricles contract, the pressure in the ventricles rises above that of the atrium and this causes the closure of the mitral valve and the tricuspid valve and that produces the first heart sound, S1. After the ventricles have started contracting, the pressure in the ventricle starts to rise. There is a period of gap when the ventricles have contracted, but the aortic and the pulmonary valves have not opened up. So, the blood is not ejecting out of the ventricles. That means the volume of the blood is constant in the ventricles, and this period is known as isovolumetric contraction. The period of isovolumetric contraction ends when the semilunar valves open up, and the blood is ejected into the aorta and pulmonary artery. There is a rapid ejection of the blood at the beginning and as the blood volume decreases, there is the slow ejection phase. We can compare the murmur of aortic stenosis into this rapid ejection and slow ejection phase. The aortic stenosis murmur is crescendo-decrescendo murmur which means it increases in intensity at the beginning and decreases in intensity at the end. It increases in intensity during the rapid ejection phase and decreases during the slow ejection phase. After the ventricular systole has ended, 
the pressure in the ventricles decrease and it is less than that in the aortic and pulmonary arteries so aortic and pulmonary valves close and second heart sound is produced but there is a slight delay between the end of ventricular systole and closure of these valves because of the inertia of the blood that is ejecting out of the aortic and pulmonary arteries so this period of slight delay is known as protodiastole and at the end of protodiastole as to heart sound is produced now the ventricles start to relax and again as the ventricles starts to relax the pressure in the ventricles is decreasing but it is not so much less that the mitral and tricuspid valves open up so as the ventricle is relaxing and all of the four valves are closed the volume of blood in the ventricle is constant and this is known as isovolumetric relaxation at the end the ventricular pressure becomes less than that of the atrium and the av valves open up and the blood is rapidly filled in the ventricles at the beginning and slow filling at the end now at the end of the slow filling phase there again comes a period of last rapid filling now this last rapid filling occurs because of the atrial systole that occurs at the end of the ventricular diastole the remaining blood in the atrium is poured into the ventricles in this last rapid filling we can compare this phases to the murmur of mitral stenosis the murmur of mitral stenosis is mid diastolic murmur with opening snap and a pre systolic accentuation it begins in the mid diastole at the beginning of the rapid filling continues throughout the diastole and at the end there is a pre systolic accentuation due to the atrial contraction now when would this pre systolic accentuation of mitral stenosis murmur be absent it will be absent in case where the atrial contraction is not happening and when does this happen this happens during the atrial fibrillation so a mitral stenosis complicated with atrial fibrillation will produce a mid diastolic murmur without any pre systolic accentuation so this is basically the phase of cardiac cycle now let's look at the cardiac cycle in this table at the end we can see the numbers 1 2 3 4 and 5 one is the atrial systole two is the isovolumetric contraction of the ventricle three is the ejection phase four is the isovolumetric relaxation of the ventricles and five is the ventricular filling phase at the top most part we can see the ecg at the beginning of the atrial systole there is the p wave which depolarizes the atrium and the atrium contract at the beginning of the ventricular systole we can see the qrs complex this depolarizes the ventricles and produce the ventricular contraction at the end of the ventricular contraction we can see the t wave which is the repolarization wave this relaxes the ventricle and begins of the diastole we can see the heart sounds produced s1 is produced at the beginning of the ventricular systole s2 produced at the end of the ventricular systole s3 is the added heart sound it occurs during volume overload s4 is the fourth heart sound it produced during the pressure overload So now let's look at the jugular venous pressure. The A wave is the atrial contraction. C is the ventricular contraction. The X descent it is during the collection of the blood in the atria. The pressure decreases in the jugular veins. After the blood have been collected in the atria, the pressure increases in the jugular veins. This is known as the V wave. And during the ventricular diastole the valves open and the atria are emptied and again the pressure in the jvp is decreased this is the y descent now let's move to the areas of the heart these are the areas where the sound from each valve is best heard at the aortic area lies at the second intercostal space in the right sternum pulmonary area lies in the second intercostal space in the left of sternum tricuspid area lies in the fifth intercostal space in the left of sternum and the mitral area lies in the cardiac apex just medial to the mid clavicular line in the fifth intercostal space other than this there is the orbs point which lies at the third intercostal space at the left of the sternum moving towards the murmurs the hearings 
under which the murmurs are described are the timing of the murmur, is it systolic or diastolic, the duration of the murmur, the character of the murmur, the pitch of the murmur, is it low pitched or high pitched, the intensity of the murmur, the location and the radiation. To remember the timings of the murmur, we have to analyze if that murmur is occurring due to the blood flow into the ventricles or due to the blood flow out of the ventricles. If the blood flow is occurring out of the ventricles, the murmur will be systolic murmur. If the blood flow is occurring into the ventricles, the murmur will be diastolic murmur. For example, in case of mitral stenosis, the murmur is occurring as the blood is flowing from atria to the ventricles. So this murmur is diastolic murmur. In case of aortic regurgitation murmur, the blood flow is occurring from the aorta to the ventricles. So again this murmur is diastolic murmur. But in case of mitral regurgitation, the murmur is happening because the blood flow is occurring from the ventricles into the atrium. So this murmur will be systolic murmur. The murmur of aortic stenosis occurs as the blood moves from ventricles to the aorta. So this murmur again will be systolic murmur as the blood is moving out of the ventricles. For the pitch, all of the murmurs are high pitched except mitral stenosis murmur which is low pitched. All of the high pitched murmurs are heard with the diaphragm of the stethoscope and the low pitched murmurs are heard with the bell of the stethoscope. Now let's move to all the specific murmurs. First let's look at the aortic stenosis murmur. It is occurring when the blood is flowing out of the ventricles so this is systolic murmur and it occurs throughout the systole and it is a crescendo decrescendo murmur. It increases in intensity and decreases. Its character is harsh and musical. The harsh character is heard based at the carotids and the musical is heard based at the cardiac apex. So this Dissociation of harsh and musical sounds is known as the Calaverdin phenomena. Its pitch is high, location is at the second intercostal space in the right of the sternum and it can radiate to the carotids. This was all about the aortic stenosis murmur. Now let's look at mitral regurgitation murmur. It occurs during systolic phase. It is holosystolic murmur which means that it occurs throughout the systole. The character is loud and blowing, the pitch is high and it is best heard at the 5th intercostal space at the cardiac apex and this murmur can radiate to the axilla. Now let's move on to the aortic regurgitation murmur. The blood is flowing into the ventricles so it is a diastolic murmur and it occurs during the early phase of diastole and it occurs throughout the diastole but it is heard most intensely at the early phase of diastole and cannot be made out much clearly in the end. So it is called early diastolic murmur and it is decrescendo in nature. That is it decreases in intensity. It is high pitched murmur and it is best heard at the arms point in the third intercostal space at the left of the sternum. Sometimes the aortic regurgitation murmur can also be heard at the cardiac apex and to differentiate it from the murmur of the mitral regurgitation, we have to put the stethoscope at the axilla because the aortic regurgitation murmur will not radiate to the axilla whereas mitral regurgitation murmur will radiate. Now let's move on to the mitral stenosis murmur. It occurs because of the blood flow into the ventricles so it is diastolic murmur and there is an opening snap at the beginning of the murmur because of the calcified valves these valves will make a noise when they open up and it is a mid-diastolic murmur. It occurs after the isovolumetric relaxation phase during the rapid filling and there is a pre-systolic accentuation due to the atrial contraction also known as the atrial kick. It is rough rumbling murmur heard best at the apex and it doesn't radiate. So that's all about the murmurs. The main important point lies in knowing about the blood flow in the murmur, whether it occurs into the ventricles or out of the ventricles. In that way you can differentiate systolic and diastolic murmurs. And that's all about the cardiac cycle and the murmurs. Thank you guys for listening to the end. If you found the video useful, do press the like button. Please subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends. 
and spread the knowledge i'll be bringing such videos again regularly uh, thank you